hit the land speed record. Both realize they must build the most technologically advanced car on the planet. 1400 kilometers north of Spanaway, Washington, is the tiny British Columbia town of Fort St. John, home to the North American Eagle's massive engine. The J-79 is one of the most sophisticated jet engines ever built by the U.S. military. Short of a nuclear reactor, this engine produces more energy per square foot than any other mechanical device on the planet. Enough to take Ed supersonic. It weighs uh, 3,840 pounds and generates 17,800 pounds of thrust in a stock configuration. Uh, the cost to the military back when this was new was about 1.1 million. Despite these stunning numbers, no one's taking any chances. For the record run, the engine will be tricked out with a special ceramic coating and high temperature rotor blades to generate another 10,000 horsepower. More than enough to go 800 miles per hour. The man in charge of getting the engine ready is Canadian Robin Sight. Even though the engine was designed several decades ago, it, to this day it remains a very complex piece of equipment. Robin Seif is the world expert on the J-79 jet engine. He scours the planet salvaging old ones, rebuilding them for the energy industry, who use them as generators to push natural gas through pipelines. The survival has been sleeping for days in there. Prepping the J-79 is precision work. There's no room for error. Even the smallest mistake could lead to disaster. The goal today is to fire up the engine and light off the afterburner. The afterburner is critical. It gives the car an instant speed injection, another 300 miles per hour, by simply lighting the exhaust gases on fire. Without the AB, the North American Eagle is dead on arrival. So you don't really want to be standing directly in line with the intake of the engine either. You want to be well off the sides. The whole vehicle will have no respect for any of us. We have to respect it. Okay, absolutely. Working the J-79 jet engine is like dancing with a dragon. Forget the rules of engagement and it'll devour you, literally. Massive intakes on each side are so powerful, they can suck in a fully grown man at 8 meters and cut him to pieces. This engine is a killer. But what the first test runs reveal scares everybody. Afterburner won't light. So Bill calls the team's other J-79 jet engine expert at the Mojave Test Center in Southern California. We're getting a big fog, so we know we're getting fuel, but we're not seeing the torch light at all. We've got ignition. It's just a matter of getting things to sink in properly. So I think we're pretty close. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. For some reason, the igniter is out of sync and won't light the exhaust gases on fire. For the next six hours, they tune and retune the engine, searching for the elusive fix. Hopefully our next run will uh, work, so we'll just keep working at it. Finally, all the hard work pays off. Near the end of the day, it happens. The afterburner ignites. History in the making. 
accident letter here. Eight hundred miles an hour, Beetle. But with all the focus on the afterburner, no one realizes that another problem's been missed. On the outside of the engine, a critical feedback cable is broken. A cable that will come back to haunt the North American Eagle. Shadle and Keith Zangy, the engine is just part of the equation. Their jet car, the North American Eagle, won't be breaking any records without wheels. And not just any wheels, the most perfectly crafted wheels on earth. At 800 miles per hour, rubber melts like warm ice cream. So the Eagle's wheels will be cut from a solid block of aluminum, both tough and light. And they'll be crafted by one of the few people capable, Canadian Steve Green. Steve Green is an expert machinist. He's been with Ed and Keith since the beginning. In a way, this terrifies him. Very few people in the world have ever done anything like this, and uh, the British people have broken the sound barrier already. They're sure as heck not going to give us any advice. The North American Eagle team is literally working at the cutting edge. At 800 miles per hour, the car's wheels will spin at 8,000 revolutions per minute. So all work must be extremely precise. Within 25 thousandths of a centimeter, that's half the thickness of a strand of hair. Any mistake, and these wheels will be ripped to shreds on the race course. This wheel at high RPM will stretch in diameter like you are pulling on an elastic band. Now, if you are exceeding the yield strength of the material, then this wheel will just have a catastrophic failure. It will just explode. There are other deadly challenges beyond the speed of sound. Top of the list, stopping without killing yourself. The North American Eagle weighs 7,200 kilograms. At 800 miles per hour, stopping it is like stopping a jet fighter in full flight. Speed brakes will slow it down to 500 miles per hour. Parachutes will bring it down to 300 miles per hour. But then what? To answer that vital question, Ed and Keith are heading south with Steve Green. Their destination, the labs of a very unusual scientist. Hey, Jerry, how you doing? In the unusual world of inventor Jerry Lamb, magnets are king. If I didn't have the copper underneath, these two magnets would basically uh, come and snap together. For 23 years, magnets have been at the center of Lamb's experiments. Now he's perfected a way to use them to make things move in the air. Yeah, one day this will be the Jetsons. But at Lamb's Research Center, the Jetsons have already arrived. Lamb's already used his magnetic concept to drive a prototype mass transit system. It's exactly the same concept he'll use to stop the rampaging North American Eagle. It's very simple. What we use is copper, aluminum, platinum, silver, and I can't afford gold. Uh, but it's a conductor. And as long as there's no motion between the magnet and the conductor, it's not magnetic. But as soon as you move the magnet uh, relative to the copper, it creates eddy currents. And those eddy currents are like having a rock in the river. And when you see the water swirling around the rock and you see those little eddies, that's exactly what happens in the copper. And so when I move it, it turns the copper into a magnet. And if I do it hard enough, I can actually move the conductor, for instance, here the aluminum, I can do it without touching. And so that force is what we will use to break the North American Eagle. Instead of regular brakes, the Eagle will have a giant magnet. At 300 miles per hour, Ed will step on the brakes and move the magnet towards an aluminum rotor attached to the wheel. So now your wheel is spinning, and what we're going to do is we're going to begin applying the brake. As the magnet gets closer to the rotor, it will create eddy currents in the...